I was once dragged into the headmaster's office after I was caught leaning out of a window and firing a cream egg into my friend's mouth with a catapult. <laughs> was this when you were a teacher or a pupil? <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it was when I was a teacher. <laughs> um, so, can you describe the, the setup? Um, I, I was teaching in a drama studio on the ground floor, mm -hmm. and I could see my friend who was teaching economics on the <laughs> second floor at the end of the building. So, it's across, is there like a courtyard in between? Yeah, playground. Playground. And. He went to different schools, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> Was it, did the moat not get in the way, or was it...? <laughs> <laughs> right, goody, goody, the bell's gone, let's go to the courtyard! <laughs> OK, let's... <laughs> you're, you're firing over the croquet lawn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I confiscated a catapult that morning from a child. OK. I was in my drama studio, there's an office, I closed the door and let the children uh, do whatever they used to do in my sure. lessons. <laughs> and I, I hung out of the window, I saw my friend, Gavin, yeah. and I went... <whistles> it was the height of summer. Right. So Gavin is in the middle of an economics lesson, <whistles> and he goes, oh, there's my friend. Gosh, he's holding an unwrapped cream egg. And he goes... <laughs> it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't quite that instinctive. I. I sh I waved the uh, catapult at him, and he was baffled at first. And then I could, I, I could see him distracting his children by setting them some mundane task. Then I revealed the unpeeled egg. Which, by now, by the way, hashtag height of summer, melting. They melt very fast. Here's the thing, Claudia. I genuinely had a mini fridge in my office because... <laughs> I did, because I regularly abuse the uh, drama budget. I'm sorry, but I was very bored. <laughs> I, bought, I, bought a mi <laughs> I bought a mini fridge. <laughs> and just to add colour, I'll tell you this, I bought a top-of-the-range DVD player and I swapped it for one that my grandmother had given me. <laughs> so it's a really nice one home. <laughs> separate, separate story. <laughs> Can we just say, can we say that we believe that story? <laughs> That's true. story. I've got a technical question about the window. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Because in schools, windows only open to a very small certain point, yeah. so the kids can't jump Especially out. Especially on the second floor. Wow, how rough was the old school that you bad. taught? Really bad. You couldn't on the window in case they jumped out. Yeah, yeah, just in case they jumped out and drowned in the moat. So, basically... <laughs> That window will only open to a certain yes, point. Yeah. Right. The window did only open half, so Gav had to get on his knees and position his head. <laughs> his, his head virtually filled the amount of window that was open. It was a slide-up uh, window. Where was the headmaster at this point? Walking through playground slash courtyard. He was. He was in his office, I imagine, pretending to do work. Oh. <laughs> And here is the thing yeah. that will convince you one way or the other straight away. <laughs> I mean, it was, I would say it was 25 foot and Gavin did catch it in his mouth. What are they clapping? You lot are going to feel so stupid if that's a lie. <laughs> what do you think, David's team? Does it ring true for you? I do believe the lie is being packaged with real stuff. So, confiscation the, of the... The mini fridge is true. Yeah. True. The confiscation, of, yeah. Everything around the lie is true, but the lie is still a lie. OK, yeah, let's yeah. go, let's go. We'll go lie. Yeah. You're saying it's a lie. Greg, was it the truth or was it a lie? There were elements of truth, but yes. <laughs> Damn you. It's <laughs> a lie. <laughs> I once caused an injury to one man whilst trying to get a different man to say the word vegetables. <laughs> Please, team. Right, just the word vegetables. Yeah. Do you what? really like the word vegetables? Um, no, not as a general rule, no, okay. but I liked it when this man said it. Why? <laughs> what was it about this man, the way he said vegetables, that was funny? Did he have a speech impediment? Or... No, no, he didn't. He was a very intense man, though, and he was also Austrian. I was with a friend once, and he's a, he was a colleague of ours, sorry, and I overheard him say vegetables, and we both found it incredibly funny. Um, so, can you just roughly give us a, an impression of how he used to say vegetables? Is it even just he, said, he said it exactly like this. Yeah. Oh, vegetables! 
And then we happened to be on a coach trip with him, and so we spent the whole coach trip <laughs> trying to get him to save vegetables right, so again. Right, so where were you? Where were you going and how did uh, you know I was him? on a school trip. I used to be a teacher, so we and were... And he, a... he was a teacher? Yeah, he was a teacher. What did he, he teach? He was the head of languages, and he was... Head of languages? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the head of languages just to go... the vegetables! <laughs> Vegetables. <laughs> imagine, imagine I'm the man. OK, I'm on the coach, I'm, I'm sat, we're, we're driving. Off you go. Um, so I said, so, um... Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You're very big, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like him at all. <laughs> You're very big, aren't you? <laughs> So I was saying things like, oh, I've, I've been trying to um, keep fit lately. I've, and I know that you're into keep fit. It, you know, it, w would you re recommend for a healthy diet? And he was going, well, you know, I would, uh, you must eat a balanced diet, you must eat greens, and uh, you, you must enjoy some protein in, in limited... I was going, yeah, yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> if you were to group some of those foods together... <laughs> And he was going, well, I mean, yeah, you must have carbohydrates, of course, oh, and you must have... Yeah. And it was, it was horrific. It went on for about an hour. <laughs> uh, and every time I tried to find a new angle for vegetables, his ludicrous Austrian interpretation of things led us down a dark alley. And it, it was literally an hour in the making. And how did you finally get him to say it? Um, I, I honestly can't remember. It came out of nowhere and he suddenly said it, and he said it with such passion. It was... He, he went, Oh, well, of course you must have vegetables! <laughs> I, I started biting my hand to stop myself from laughing. <laughs> and my... <laughs> and my friend who was next to me, there was, a, there was a jagged piece of metal at the front of the coach, and because it was so funny, just to remind you, you were vegetables, of course! <laughs> And my friend saw the piece of metal and pushed his knee into it on purpose <laughs> to stop himself from laughing. <laughs> and blood started like spraying out of his <laughs> started spraying out of his knee. Yeah. And that is this is getting love at this story. And I'll tell you another detail. We went and did the trip, which was in Paris, and then after we came all the way back <laughs> all the way back to, to um, Calais, and I said to him, um, you know, we put all the kids' passports in that hotel in Paris last night. Did you, um, did you remember to... Cos he was in charge of the trip. Did you remember to bring those? And he, he, he was standing up in front of the children on the coach and he went, Oh, Shazer! <laughs> and he... to speak to the poor authorities <laughs> and get permission to take the kids on without passports while he went back on his own. <laughs> Can I tell you one more detail as well? We were also standing in the middle of Paris under the Eiffel Tower. We'd been there for an hour and the kids were all running around. And he came over and went, we must, we must go, we are late for our next appointment. <laughs> and I said, well, we should just make sure that all the kids are here. And he goes, yes, of course we should, yes. And he turned around <laughs> and went, is everybody here? <laughs> Kids went, yeah, yeah, he went, well, well then we will move on. <laughs> <laughs> the <new> vegetables! <laughs> what are you thinking, Lee? Oh. I think it's true. True from John. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I think a lie. You are a fantastic actor, Mr. Greg Davis. Well, so, so what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what do we think, Alex? I think you'll find I'm BAFTA okay. nominated. <laughs> <laughs> We're all BAFTA nominated. <laughs> <laughs> False. Uh, okay, we'll go with lie. You're going to say it's a lie, Greg. No. Truth well, or lie? It is the truth. Oh! <laughs> that yes, that was all true. At school, I invented a game called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. <laughs> there we are. Uh, please, team, what do you think? What was the game called again? Um, <laughs> it was called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. Right, and can you describe the game to us? 
Myself and um, several friends, uh, we all had snorkel parkers. Well, what is a snorkel yeah. parker for some, for some of the younger viewers? <laughs> it's, um, it, it's a large uh, hooded coat with a fur-lined Oh, collar. the one that comes out at the front yeah. and it's fur... Okay. And you can, you can zip it up so that it comes right up and uh, so that only your eyes are visible. Can you describe the rules? Imagine we've never met, I've got my snorkel parker. <laughs> what would happen next? Well, then you and I, Lee, will go to the music practice room when... I'm not um, falling for this again. <laughs> and you zip up your snorkel parker, yeah. and then you, you... When someone's practising their violin with a violin teacher in the music practice room, yeah. you duck down b below the window, and then you just come up with your snorkel parker on. <laughs> So just imagine you're a historical reenactment society. Oh. You've got your members there. I suppose. I suppose. How I would you? Would. I'd have to fully demonstrate it by using my um, making an ad. Feel free to ask parker. Richard and David to help you out on this. Will you help me out with this? Um, well, I mean, I, 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 you see, this is one of the moments where. <laughs> So if, so if you imagine that this was the music practice room and, and there was some, someone in there having a lunchtime, a lunchtime uh, violin lesson, yeah. you, you would wait until they were in mid-tutorial. Right, then, I'm picturing it, yeah. And then together, yeah. after three... OK. Yeah. One, two, three... <laughs> That's it, really. <laughs> was the secret to getting the fact that they never knew who you were? You no, were they wouldn't know who you were because yeah. there's only your eyes showing. And he'd tell you to go away, so you would all duck down away, and then you'd leave it for a minute. And then come back. And then up you'd again. just come back up again. Yeah. yeah. What age were you? Maybe... They'd tell me you weren't one of the teachers. <laughs> no, maybe 13, 14. Right the way through to when you left. Right, right through till sixth form. Yeah. You, you never got told to stop this, or you got. A... Yeah. Well, they would they would bang on the window and be really furious for with us. For five years, they were banging down. on the window. <laughs> They did say, lads, it's getting really boring. <laughs> but you and, see... And we know you are, Greg, because you're eight foot six. <laughs> but just out of interest, by show of hands, who would like to play Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room? I love it. Yeah. I'm quite keen on I've, the game. I've already played it, I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. I mean, the last it time... It does I... sound utterly ridiculous, Greg. <laughs> it's almost as if you're lying. <laughs> Do you think he is lying, Lee? What are you going to say on this one? Well, I, I actually believe him. I could just see you doing that for, for kicks and giggles. Bob, which way are you leaning with this? Well, it's got the anticipation, it's got the jeopardy, <laughs> it's got the lot. Yeah. What a game! <laughs> Greg, Something tells me you're going to get a phone mom. call from Waddington's. <laughs> <laughs> if this gets picked up, this is... Just because I've talked about it now, it's mine, right? It's only yours yeah. if you really played it. If it's a lie, then you haven't copyrighted well, who's it. Well, if it is a lie and I've just read it off this thing, whose idea is it? Well, well, the, I'm the person who wrote the lie. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to maintain the rights to Balaclava Sports Hall. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. if anyone's interested. <laughs> right, Lee, it's time to take a guess. What are you going to say? We're going for truth. You're saying it's true. OK. Uh, Greg, were you telling the truth? Or were you telling me? Well, oh, right, because that would make me utterly pathetic, wouldn't it? Yes, I was telling the truth. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, Greg did invent a game called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. At school, Greg was very popular with the other pupils. Not surprising, really, considering they'd created him in a science lesson. <laughs> <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. <laughs> Lee? Greg? Yes? Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be no, unless David stands up with me, there'll be no perspective. David? In fact, let's have proper perspective. Connie, yeah. can you stand up? <laughs> You know the question. <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath, as I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept in. It's, no, it's no, 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 no. You definitely don't hang off a bath no, like you no. hang off a bed. <laughs> because a bed, flat. go like that, and then you hang off. Yeah. You have to go up and cross and hang off. <laughs> the it's thing all, but 
you're not a snake, Greg. The thing <laughs> what actually uh, drove me to change my circumstances was that I was genuinely... I was bruising the side of my... Uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Yeah, well, Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> that is mad. Yes, well, you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine, so bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that period. <laughs> so did, you have, did you have a bed? In no. the house? Did you do... oh, oh, so that was the reason you were in the bar? There was a... There was a um... well, why did you think you was in the bar? <laughs> I, cho I chose to, Phil, yeah. How many other people were there in the flat? Uh, three. Three people, what, three beds? Yeah. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa that had a particularly... a peculiar cor corner unit, mm. and I mm. took um, both cushions from that corner unit and they fitted in the bath perfectly and it was incredibly comfortable. So, hang on, it wasn't a freestanding bath? A roll-top. Yeah, was it a roll top freestanding it, bath? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. Where was this, Greg? Which town were we, you? Was this Oxford or Cambridge? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Isleworth in West London. <laughs> <laughs> it was only because of a, a, a mix up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix up? I'd agreed to move in with these three guys, and we got the wrong size house. <laughs> Hang on, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. Yeah, there was four was of you, you, and you got a three-bedroom house with a bit of a mix-up. Okay. <laughs> the boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? Because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> So, Lee, what are you thinking? Marcus. I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. The taps. Phil? Taps for me, you don't... If you're going to sleep in a bath, you don't put your head no. up the taps. Silly. I think it might be true, but I'm not going to over... Oh, well, you're the skip. You've got the armbands, son. I might be the skip. Do you get armbands if you're a captain? <laughs> Only if you can't swim. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't know if this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> That was sufficiently moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, going, I'm going with it. I'm saying it's true now. What okay. are you saying, Skippy? Should we say true? True. Not Probably Skippy, yeah. Rob, not Skippy. I'm not going to go and go and fetch help. <laughs> I'm a skip. Right? Someone's fallen into a mine shop. <laughs> We're going to go for truth. Go on, mate. True. True. We're, changing, true. we're going for truth. Just saying it's true. Greg Davis, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? Yes, I do, yeah. Then I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Oh. Oh. Yes, it was a lie. Greg didn't sleep in his bathtub every night for his first term at university. I used to try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets signifying death. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? <laughs> what was the drawing? It was an owl. <laughs> Ooh. What, what, what? The owl of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. very, its full title was actually the Hoot Owl Death Sign. Owl. Oh. What would you mean the owl of death? What was it doing in this drawing? Hoot Owl Death Sign? That old chestnut. I could draw it for you if you like. <laughs> Greg? Yeah? I've got a pen, I've got some paper. I'll come over there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Don't stand up next to me, it just highlights it. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, Greg, can you... <laughs> so, please, draw the owl of death. So... <laughs> Don't look at it, David, you'll die. <laughs> Just imagine you're innocently, you went in your pocket, <laughs> innocently minding your own business. You go, oh, what's this in my. <laughs> oh, no, it's the Owl of Death! Your friends would find that in their pocket and be. Not my friends, my deadly enemies. Right. <laughs> what, would, what would be the purpose of that? It was uh, for people who had crossed my friend and I. Well, what kind of things would they have to do to cross you? There was an English teacher who we uh, 
found a bit boring, so he uh, slipped one in his pocket. That was, the, uh, that was the highlight of the whole campaign, actually, was that the English teacher once stood up in front of the class and was chatting away and went into his pocket and went, ah. Oh. <laughs> and he went, sorry, everyone. Um, does anyone know anything about this? Because I've just... <laughs> Did you, was the purpose of it to, to scare them, like you would tell yeah. them that later on it was you? Or? No, no, of course not. We were both nerdy cowards. <laughs> Did you, you created a sort of mythology around what might happen if you found the hoot owl of death in, in your pocket. It, in our minds, anyone who found the hoot owl of death in their pocket would uh, very shortly afterwards meet their demise. <laughs> <laughs> To take a guess. What are you going to say? Is what do we true? think, Phil? Do you think, um, that, do you think that is possible? I, th I think it's possible, but I think it's a, it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Okay. My you say lie. You say lie. What about you, Lee? I say lie. Right, Greg. Yes. Truth or lie? Well, it would be pretty tragic if two uh, boys had spent their youth doing <laughs> that, wouldn't it? True. And it is indeed <laughs> true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Greg did try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets, signifying death. To avoid being disturbed backstage on Pointless, I have a fake name on my dressing room door. <laughs> Who do you get disturbed by? Oh, you, you People know. with windmills with his face on. <laughs> <laughs> we call them freaks, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> Uh, just contestants, essentially. You don't want contestants to be knocking on the door and Why coming not? in. And... Because sometimes you've got question papers, and so, you know, I don't want them seeing what the questions are for their show. All right. So what name do you put on the door to stop people knocking? Is it Rob Brydon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I use the name uh, the Reverend Wendy Benson. The Reverend Wendy Benson? Mm. Is there a Reverend Wendy Benson? Well, I... I there I, must I, be. I, the, but the key thing is... I am not the Reverend Wendy Benson. <laughs> what does Zander have on his... Uh, he is yeah. Sir Peter Morehouse. <laughs> Sir Peter Morehouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He you invented know. the hovercraft, didn't he? No, that was uh, Christopher Cockerell. Oh, you're quite right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the name Lee has in his door. <laughs> well, it's, it's something cock something, I can't remember exactly. <laughs> You'll have to change the names now, won't you? Because you've admitted them in public and I future, suppose so. future contestants. Well, it depends if it's true or not, I suppose. So, <laughs> <laughs> so is it the truth? I think it could be, yeah. I, I could imagine. You think that he's changed his name to Reverend Wendy Benson? <laughs> Alexander Armstrong Not... changes his name to... Sir Peter Moorehouse. Sir you. Peter... <laughs> That's exactly right. Again, extra syllables, I think, the way he said it. Um, I don't know, what do you think, Richard? I think, well... Do you think it's true you know, or a lie? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. Yeah. If it's not true, I'm going to start doing it. What's, it. what's your instinct telling you? You've been on the show a while. My instinct tells me uh, it's a lie because I don't believe he's higher status enough to have a dressing room. <laughs> Lie. It's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. So, Richard, truth or lie? It is true. Oh! <laughs> when I worked in a shoe shop, my boss was called Mr. Clog. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkably, I've had three other jobs where my boss's name was directly related to their <laughs> profession. <laughs> Hmm. What? The obvious question <laughs> to ask is, uh, what were those jobs mm. and what were these uh, people's names? Yeah, it is an obvious question. Is it maybe too obvious a question? Maybe go somewhere else first, just... <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about the first... Just tell us one of the jobs. At school, I worked in a warehouse and the boss was called Mr Foreman. Mr Foreman? <laughs> <laughs> OK. And what was your job? My bo Getting stuff down from the top shelf, yes. obviously. <laughs> How would you rate Foreman as, as, as a boss? If he was suspicious, would he grill you? Foreman? Yeah, listen. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Why did we have so many jobs? Did we keep getting sacked? No further questions. 
What were the other two jobs? Yeah, what was the other jobs? Uh, I worked in... Do you remember the predecessor to Iceland, which was B-Jam? Yeah. My supervisor was called John Frost. Frost, B-Jam. <laughs> you can see why B-Jam didn't last, because people will go, why don't they just call it Honey? <laughs> <laughs> Your final job was? Uh, well, it was my first ever job in television. Right. And that was? Uh, it was well, it was a researcher on a computer games program. Okay, and your your, your boss, boss is called? My boss is called Tony Verrill. What, what, does, does, that what, mean? what does Verrill mean? That's in relation what to what do you mean? What? It's a surname, but his initials were TV. <laughs> <laughs> Of all these bosses that you remember, Richard, who, uh, who would you say was your favourite boss? What was it about that boss that made them so Well, adorable? John Frost wasn't really my boss, I, so I liked him. We had a bit more of a, uh, a, bit more of a relationship. Uh, Mr Foreman, I found that was quite stressful. It was one of my first ever jobs. Uh, and Tony Verrill still works in the industry, so I, I, I will not be passing comments. Tony Verrill still <laughs> works in the, in industry. the industry. I've never come across him. Yeah, I've not come across what Tony What have you though? come across him, David? Um, yeah, I think I've worked with Tony. Verrill. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Not a hundred percent, but... Yeah! Oh, do you know who Tony Verrill is? No. I have no... Tony Verrill? No, never heard of him. Who, uh, it's just... weird that, that all, none of us three have heard of Tony Verrill, and yet all you three have heard of Tony Verrill. <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> Catherine hasn't. Catherine has or hasn't? I haven't, but it rings a bell. Oh, so you... <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, truth what or lie? Think, truth or lie? Well, the thing is, I think you're almost certainly sort of geeky enough to keep a record of that sort of thing, and it's the type of thing that would amuse you, and you'd remember at the time. On the other hand, it's also the type of thing that you could quickly construct to be clever. It's a challenging one. What do you think? Lie? Mm, yes, I think so. We'll have to say lie. Say yeah. lie. OK. Just because of Tony Vowell. Richard, truth or lie? It is... a lie. Wow. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Richard's never worked in a shoe shop with Mr. Clog. Last year, at a party, I shared a jacuzzi with three of the eggheads. Jerry <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell's tea. <laughs> which, which, which three eggheads? Oh, uh, it was uh, Barry. <laughs> I, know, I know, right? <laughs> Kevin. And Chris. Do the eggheads, are they only allowed in a jacuzzi for three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the party? Well, it was, it was a, all of the sort of uh, quiz shows together. We're doing a big photo shoot, uh, and it was us. And by us, I mean pointless. Um, it was eggheads, uh, the chase, and uh, like 15 to 1. And it, and it, how'd, you, how'd you get all them in? <laughs> <laughs> Just out of interest, who initiated the jacuzzi in? There have been some photographs in it earlier in the evening, and then later in the evening, people, uh, people okay. were jumping in of their own accord. Right. Okay. What was the photo shoot for? <clears throat> Radio Times, TV Times, one of those. So, so with the, the, the concept for the photo was three eggheads and you in a jacuzzi. <laughs> what, were the, what were the 15 to 1ers and the, and the chasers doing? We were, photo we were doing all sorts of photographs, drinking champagne, jacuzzi. It was supposed to be, you know... Decadence and all this kind of stuff. The I concept think it was, was, de I think it was decadence in the quizzing community. I think it was I think <laughs> champagne, chocolates, just being decadent. I think. But chocolates yes. in a jacuzzi. Not in a jacuzzi. Sort of like gone a mad. box of black magic bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> I think photographing a lot of people from different quiz shows in a ridiculously kind of opulent setting is, is the sort of idea that a listings at magazine might have. For example, with the last series of this, they had us sitting round a table pretending to play poker and pulling loads of faces. Yes. It's the kind of stunt that they, they do, rather than just having a normal photograph and then a, a note of when the programme is on, which is all you need. <laughs> <laughs> I rather enjoyed the, the oh. poker photo. It's a lovely opportunity to spend time with you and Lee out of this environment, but never mind if you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, Rob, I also had a terrible time. <laughs> It's time to make your mind up. <laughs> what way are you leaning, Alan? I don't, I don't think it's true. I can see the photo shoot, but I just can't see him in a jacuzzi. Continuing to party at the end of a photo shoot is cert was certainly not something we considered, was it, Lee, <laughs> at the end of the, <laughs> the aforementioned... Uh, Literally, poker. as he put the cap on the end of the camera like that, <laughs> we were in the taxi, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember as we drove off, winding the window down and hearing, it's my round, lads. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's my round! <laughs> Take your head, Tony 
he's looking! Rob sent, yeah, Rob sent me the end of his anecdote in five long texts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jermaine, what do you think? I'm gonna say... Is this a musical? Fuck! <laughs> You think a lie. You think a it's lie. a lie. A lie. So you both think it's a lie. Yeah. We'll say lie. You're going to say it's a lie. Okay. So Richard, jacuzzis, photo shoot, truth or lie? It is. Lie. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yes, it's a lie. Richard didn't share a jacuzzi with three of the eggheads. I once buried a badger with the banker from Deal or No Deal. <laughs> Please, team. <laughs> I know the program, yeah. but who is that? Who is the banker? We never hear the banker, do we? Yeah. No, I'm not allowed to tell. If I told you, I would have to bury you alongside the badger, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, so the badger found out. Is that what happened to him? <laughs> What's Please, burying the badger, badger a euphemism for? <laughs> <laughs> this banker. Mm -hmm. Can you describe him to me, please? Yes, I could do. <laughs> He's just a guy, like you and I. Somewhere in between. Well, which you and one I. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Why do you know the guy from? I know that I, way back when I, I used to be the producer of Deal or No Deal. Right. Um, and what's his name? Uh, he is called the banker. Now, what's his real name? I can't you... tell you what his real name. Well, is. It's on the credits of the show. <laughs> tell us. What does it say on the credits of the show? It says the banker as himself. Why, it's a, it's a... why was the badger dead? Yeah. Uh, we hit it with a car, unfortunately. What were you doing in the car with him? Uh, about seventy. No. <laughs> <laughs> we were on holiday together. Where were you on holiday? Uh, Badger Country, Cornwall. Was Edmunds there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not part of this. I'm like, yeah. It's a good question, though, Greg. Was Noel there? No, it was a holiday. Where... I... <laughs> <laughs> Before you yeah. buried the badger, did yeah. we put him in a box <laughs> and then there were loads of other empty boxes? <laughs> <laughs> and you stood there and you had to choose which box he was <laughs> Dead squirrel, wrong box. <laughs> I think it's very sad that the badger died and everything. But yes. Why was so much trouble to dig the grave? Because the banker's wife was with us. Oh. And... Can you tell us her name, or is she work for? <laughs> I can she worked for the Iranian government. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the banker? <laughs> <laughs> was this during the day or of the evening? It was. It was late at night. Were you, Were you? Had you had a few? I had, I had had a few, yeah. So you went and got spanked? Were you driving then? No, I wasn't driving. He was say, driving if he's banker. not going to say the name of the banker, of <laughs> deal or deal, he's not going to on national television go, I was driving, I was mullered. <laughs> <laughs> say, Badger, I mean none. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what? The yeah. banker's wife then says, we should bury it. The banker's wife? It's only like Cluedo, this, go on. <laughs> So which the obvious answer is we're not going to bury it. It's sort of it's two in the morning. Uh, right. It's really cold and it's dark. What what's happened then? So the badger is dead. Right. Yeah. Sad occasion. I'm not underestimating the sadness of it. And he's, there's probably a badger wife and badger children at home. So that's. Right. I accept Are that you not allowed sad. to say their names either? <laughs> <laughs> so you checked the gender of the badger then. You know it was a male badger, <laughs> or a female badger in a same-sex relationship. <laughs> Who've adopted a small badger, <laughs> perhaps an orphaned badger without a home in need I think of you're uh, rest? Wildly what? overestimating the sophistication of the badger community. <laughs> well, what happened next? Uh, we went back, got yeah. spades. Yeah. Went back to where the badger lay prone, buried it, said a few words. What did you but, say? Yeah. Just said, Lord protect this badger. <laughs> or worse than that effect. If only you'd have said it an hour earlier. <laughs> Lord, protect this badger. I think I, I said a few words about the family of the badger and <laughs> gave some words Tell us apology. the word. I want the words. Ah. I apologise to the family of this badger, <laughs> wherever they may be, because <laughs> I'm guessing they're nearby. Yeah. Put some stones on it. Went back home, started drinking again. Yeah. So, Lee, what's it going to be, yeah. truth or lie? Oh, I think it's true, Lee. If Bob thinks it's true... You think it's true? I mean, yeah. Patsy? Patsy? <clears throat> I don't believe the badger bit. I think the badger That's bit... That's quite essential <laughs> to the story. <laughs> but everything else you believe. I believe he knows the banker. Right. I think he knows the banker's wife. Well, there's I your think... answer. There's but... your answer. We think it's true apart from the badger bit. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Lee, Lee, it's time to make well, it. Well, it's true. It's true. You're apart saying it's true. Bit. Um, <laughs> Richard, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.
Yes, it's true. Uh, Richard did bury a badger with the banker from deal or no deal.